Show, starring Loretta Young. Hello. Tonight our interest lies in a triangle. A man, a boy, and a car. Does that sound familiar? Oh, yes, and there's also a lady in the case. You know, our story tonight would be an idyllic love story if it weren't for one thing. And his name is Tom Stevens. Oh, there's nothing really wrong with Tom, except that he's in the springtime of life. And like spring, Tom's just busting out all over. That's because Tom is a teenager. What's all there to do about these teenagers anyway? Is a teenager a time of life, state of mind? A tempest in a teapot? Or a modern version of Attila the Hun? Let's examine this one. Let's observe 36 routine, uneventful hours in the life of teenage Tom. I know him. Me. Listen, you hear anything from Mrs. McGregor yet? No, not a whisper. Well, look, maybe we... I'll call you back now. Oh, hi, Tom. Hi. Didn't know you're home yet. Uh, anybody call me this afternoon? No, not that I know of. Why, is there anything wrong? Well, what makes you think anything's wrong? I just asked you if I had a call, that's okay, all. Okay, okay, okay. Don't bust my head off. <laughs> you know, I'm kind of new at this teenage routine, and if I goof once in a while, you just have to kind of bear with me, okay? Oh, it's not that, Susan. It's just... What? Is Dad going to be home for dinner? Yeah. Hey, he better be. We're having roast beef. Oh, roast lamb, Mrs. Stevens. Uh, Tommy, get your feet off that table and go and wash up for dinner. Okay, Brad, okay, in a sec. Do me a favor, will you? Go on upstairs and take your bath, huh? Otherwise, you'll slam dishes around all during dinner, and it's my new china. Okay. Okay. Susan, there's something I've been meaning to ask you. What? Did Dad explain about Brad when he proposed to him? <laughs> oh, Tom. No, honestly, I don't believe your father had Mrs. Bradley on his mind at that particular moment. Now, go on, handsome. Change clothes. Dinner in a half an hour, huh? Twenty minutes, Mrs. Stevens. Uh, Twenty minutes, Tom. <laughs> Darling, you should have seen the counsel for the defense. Did I have him squirming? Oh, I'll bet you did. How's the jury? I think they're with me. Good. I'd call them superior types then. <laughs> <laughs> Dad, I... Well, I thought you might want to know what happened today. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, yeah, I... the game. How'd you make out? Oh, we won, but that's not what I was going to say. Well, how'd you do? I didn't get too much of a chance. I didn't get in until the last two minutes of the fourth quarter. Oh, I'll get it, Dad. No, no, it's for me. I asked Harrison to call. Excuse oh, me. Surely, dear. Hello? Mrs. McGregor? Oh, yes. Well, this is Mr. Stevens speaking. Uh-oh. Mrs. McGregor. Tom, what's it all about? I'm sunk. Well, what accident? We got horsing around in the car this afternoon. <laughs> Bounce right over the curb into old Lady McGregor's flower bed. Yes, sir. Why couldn't you have been man enough to tell me this? Dear, I think he's been trying to tell you all evening, haven't you, Tom? Well, he hasn't been trying very hard. All right, all right, I'm sorry. You're always sorry. Afterward. Well, it wasn't only me. Norm was driving. You are just as responsible. Well, I left her a note, didn't I? And Norm and I are going to fix up the fence and pay for the damage. And who pays, ultimately? Oh, gee, Dad, it was after the game. We won and we felt like celebrating. Norm missed the corner. It could have happened to anybody. That I doubt. You might have been killed. We weren't. You might have killed somebody else. We didn't. Suppose Mrs. McGregor had been in her flower bed. She wasn't. Well, what about respect for property? Tommy, when are you going to learn that property is a trust? Get your coat. Gee, Dad, you have to sound like a lawyer all the time. I told you, I can handle it. I'm not a kid. When you start acting like a man, I'll treat you like one. Now, come on. Okay, so make a fool out of me. Treat me like a moron. Take me by the hand to apologize to Mrs. McGregor. Remember whom you're talking to. I remember. Well, that was quick. How was Mrs. McGregor? Too generous, I thought. <laughs> 
Uh, say, Tom, I got big news for you. Miss Rogers called. They're going to do your parody at school tomorrow night. You're kidding. Oh, I'm not kidding. I told you it was good. Oh, gee, I got to get a hold of Norm. Dad, can I have the car? Well, after what happened this afternoon, oh, I... Don't I... be very long, dear, will you, Tom? No, but if I don't see Norm tonight, well, we're sunk. Yeah, I know. Is it okay, Dad? I suppose... Oh, gee, Dad, important. thanks. Don't forget to put the car back in the garage when you get home. And don't slam the door. <laughs> I don't think he got that last one, Roger. He's halfway to Norm's by now. Oh, come on, sit down and relax, huh? Want some coffee? No, thanks. How about a cigarette? Ah, that I'd like. Yeah. Say, uh, what's all this rehearsing business? Mm. It's for the junior prom tomorrow night. Oh? Tom's class is putting on a theme for the Mikado. You know, he wrote a very interesting parody on now. It's the name of that thing, um, Three Little Maids Are We? Do you know he's got talent? Oh, I didn't know. Well, he has. He didn't tell me. He never tells me anything. Too busy crashing into flower beds. Oh, look, sweetheart, this is all pretty new to me. Having a husband and a son all at once. And well, loving you both. Oh, darling, it must be terrible, inheriting me oh. and Tom together. <laughs> Nonsense. It's wonderful. You know, it's like having a letter from the president and the carbon copy both autographed. Oh, Susan, I love you. Mm, I know, darling, because I love you, too. But couldn't we keep the crises down to a minimum? Sort of build up our strength for one good one, maybe once a week, huh? For your sake, dear, as well as his. Sweetheart, I'll try. Sir, help me, I'll try. <laughs> Roger, aren't you going to be late, dear? Mm -hmm. No. Mm. Not if I make all the traffic lights. Mm. It's a matter of split seconds. Well, take it easy, Pop. I don't have to bail you out. <laughs> that would be a switch. Mm. Goodbye, dear. Goodbye, honey. Mm -hmm. So long, son. Take it easy, Pop. Do you want any more pancakes, Mrs. Stevens? Oh, no, thanks, Miss Bradley. Well, I do. Well, I'm glad to see you've got your appetite back. <laughs> You all set for tonight, Tom? Yep, all squared away. I got Linda Gardenia's. She got a new dress that's top secret, so I didn't want to take any chances. And I didn't tell her about the parody. I'm saving that for a surprise. Mm, smart boy. What time are you picking her up? Oh, about 8.30, I guess. Mm. I have to pick up Bill and Sally on the way. I'm going to have a foursome, huh? Mm -hmm. That should be fun. Here you are, Tommy. Oh, thanks, Brad. Tommy! Tommy! I forgot to put the car away. You forgot to put the emergency brake on, too. Oh, brother. When I touched the car door, it rolled down the driveway and through the steward's hedge. Gee, Dad, I'm sorry. That's no good, Tommy. You're always sorry. You don't think. Tommy, you'll be late for school. You better Just go. Just a moment, please. Son, I've got to find some way to impress upon you that responsibility goes hand in hand with privilege. So, you can't use the car again. Not until I see a change in attitude. Oh, Dad, you can't. Not tonight. As of right now. But I've got to have the car tonight. I'm taking Linda and Bill and his date to the dance. It's important I... If this dance is as important as that, you can do what I used to do. Take the bus or walk. Walk? Yes. Well, with Linda in her new dress? Listen, Dad, please, I promise you, you'll see a big change in me. Tommy, I've been hearing nothing but promises for months. Now, this time, I must stand by my decision. When you're adult enough to understand that, I'll be indulgent enough to restore your privileges. I don't understand anything anymore. No, Susan. He's not a baby anymore. He's 16. He's got to start acting and thinking like a man. Oh, dear, I don't know. Maybe you're right. But... Of course I'm right. Well, 16 is such a difficult age. I remember it all too well. You're neither one thing or the other yet. Well, at 16, I had to get out and earn a living. Oh, but he doesn't. And that's not his fault. No, I suppose I'm to blame. Oh, darling, I don't think blame is the word. <laughs> but then it's the facts, ma'am, huh? Susan, dear, you don't seem to realize. Before you came, this was not a normal household. Tommy's been spoiled by me, coddled by Brad ever since his mother died. Well? He leans on us too much. But now, no more. Something's got to be done. What do you mean? Well, I think I'll send him away to school. Or he'll get discipline, a sense of order, responsibility. Now, maybe if he has to get out on his own, he'll learn to stand on his own two feet. Think for himself. Oh, I'm sorry, dear. I've got to go. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> a great time to let me know. What am I going to tell Sally? What about your dad's car? That's ours. You know my folks are in Chicago for the weekend. 
What's eating your old man, Tom? Why won't he listen to reason? Uh, he talked himself into a big sweat, so now I'm cooked. And I was counting on you. Huh. Can I help it if my father decides to play the big parent all of a sudden? Have you tried anybody else for a ride? Oh, morning. Everybody's booked solid. Well, I've wasted enough time. Every man for himself now. See ya. Tom, where have you been all morning? Hi, Linda. I I've been kind of busy. Me too. I've been helping decorate the gym all morning. Doesn't it seem like a million years until tonight? Yeah. Where do you see my new dress? Oh, it's dreamy. Sure. What's the matter? Why are you so droopy? Am I supposed to get hysterical or something? No. Only I thought, well, I, I thought this was kind of a special night for us. What's so special about a dance in a crummy gym with a lot of tired crepe paper? Thomas Stevens, what kind of a kick are you on? You sound as if you didn't want to go at all. Everybody's making such a rhubarb out of a dance. Well, please, don't do me any favors. Only I wish you'd let me know a little sooner. I've been turning down offers all week. Uh, I'd like to inquire if I could rent a car for tonight. How much does it cost? <whistles> Ten bucks. Well, I'm not going to keep it out all night. I'll get it back by one. Still ten, huh? Well, look, have you got a red convertible? Swell. Yeah, I guess I'll take it. My name is Tom Stevens. Hold it for me. I'll be down in an hour. Yeah. Map to Nya. Let's see. You're out of foo. Foo, that's it. Five, six, seven, eight. Ouch. Hey, Linda. Hi. Yeah, I just want to tell you that creep you were talking to this morning wasn't me. Well, if it wasn't, you were giving a darn good imitation. Look, you don't have to explain to me. You made it very clear this morning. When people aren't interested in me, I'm not interested in them. Darling. I have a late appointment. I won't be home for dinner tonight. Oh. Well, try to get home as soon as you can, will you? Yes, I will. I should be home about 10. Wait up for me, will you, please? Yeah, all right. Bye, dear. Hi. You going someplace? Yeah, I'm going someplace. For good. Oh. You've uh, made up your mind, I suppose. Hmm? I didn't have to make up my mind. It was made up for me. This morning. Tom, nobody can do that for you. You're not a child, you're a man. Whatever that means. He's kept harping on it so much I wouldn't know. Susan, he's ruined everything. There's just no point in talking about it anymore. Well, what about the dance tonight, huh? Well, we fixed that up just dandy. What do you mean? No car, so Linda got herself another date. Oh, no. Yeah. What about the show, your sketch? Uh, kid stuff, they don't need me. Let Norm do it. Tom. This leaving home business is pretty serious, you know. Yeah, like being sent away. Only this time I'm going to save them the trouble and expense. I'm going to enlist. Enlist? That ought to make them real happy. Well, enlisting is sort of for keeps, isn't it? I mean, doesn't the Army take kind of a dim view of men just kind of popping in and out of it, huh? Maybe the Army will make a man out of me. Tom. Tom, wait a minute. Tom, there's a little something about age, too, isn't there? People have lied about their ages before. Oh, sure, I know they have, but after all, recruiting sergeants are pretty smart, aren't they? Gee, the last thing I'd like to see happen to you right now is that they send you home like a runaway kid. Hmm? Thanks for the tip. Tommy. All right. But you take care of yourself, you hear? And remember, we love you. Oh, yeah, me too. Not as much as your dad, perhaps, but I love you too. What are you going to tell him? I don't know yet. 
sure hate to hurt him. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Well, so long. waiting up for Tommy. Guess we can call Junior Prom a special privilege night. Yeah, I, uh, I was rather hoping he'd be home early. Uh, he, he didn't have a date, as it turned out. Hmm? Well, I thought this was the big thing, the sketch, the dance. Yes, it was. But he didn't go, Roger. You mean just because I didn't give him the car? <laughs> Where is he, up in his room, sulking? No. No, no, he, he went out all right, but, well, he didn't go to the dance. Well? Roger, he's left home. Oh, don't be silly. Left home? Yes. Well, kids just don't run away over a little thing like that. It wasn't just one thing, darling. And I don't think it was little to him. Susan, you mean you knew he was going? Yes. Why didn't you do something? Why didn't you stop him? Well, I did talk to him, but I, I didn't try to stop him. But why, Susan? Because I wanted him to have a chance to think for himself. Oh, why didn't you tell me this earlier? I've got to do something. I'll call Chief Connors. Have him put out a tracer on No, no, Roger, please. Please don't do that. I, I honestly believe that if they do find him and they bring him back here, he'll never forgive you. Darling, look, I believe that our whole future is at stake here. I have faith in your son. He's a lot like you. I think he'll do the right thing on his own. If he has the chance, please, dear. Susan, you, you've known him less than a year. Maybe you know my son better than I do. Oh, darling. No, it's just that, well, you wanted him so much to grow up. Maybe you haven't realized that he has. Well, let's, let's try to get some sleep. Yeah. Yeah. It's a long night, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I should get some sleep, honey. Roger, I'm scared. I'm scared to death of what I've done to you and Tom. No, you're right. Darling, I know now that you're right. Well, I don't. All my big fat talk about he's a man. All I can think of is how young he is. Oh, come on now. Where's that faith you were talking about? Roger, I love you. What did he say to you? It was the way he acted. Kind of excited all the time, like he was on a talking kick. Kept, kept asking me questions. Like what? Like how much money I had on me, where I was going, if I was in trouble. Then he starts this thing about throwing 50 bucks my way. For what? To take the station wagon into a used car dealer in Central City and pick up the cash for it. That's when I asked him to let me out of the car. Yep, that's what he was, all right. Stolen car racket. You see everything on the highways these days. How are you? What? In trouble, like he said. Running away from home. I got kids. Oldest one just about your age. Well, I've been planning on going away for a long time. Your folks know? My stepmother does. How about your old man? Ah, he was planning on sending me away anyway. To school. Same old story. Crabby father, bossy stepmother. Well, that figures. Oh, no, she's okay. She's gonna tell my father for me. So she's left holding the bag. Well, that's probably what she wants. No, she's not like that, honest. It's my father. He means well, but... Well, take me. I ran away from home at your age. Been living off the road one way or another ever since. Well, like that bum that kicked you out of the car. And the hitchhikers you read about every day in the newspapers. Conk a guy on the head, take his car and money. They're restless. But they're never going to get anywhere. Except maybe to the state pen. 
We all got one thing in common. We're living off the road. And we come from homes run like prisons by an old man who forgot he ever made a mistake in his life, right? I don't think my father ever did. He was an honor student right through high school and college. My old man was a holy terror too, Lord rest his soul. But he was wrong about one thing, me. Yeah. There's two sides to everything. Looking back, I was just a kid. Maybe I couldn't take it. But my old man was entitled to a mistake now and then, same as me. Sure. Well, like I tell my boys, anybody can make a mistake any time. But the older you are, the harder it is to admit it. Helps to look back at your old man. Of course, mine's dead now. Gee, it's... It's after half past two. Everybody's asleep back there except the kids. Tonight's prom night. Look, son, in 20 minutes the truckles will be coming in. If I can get your ride clear to Central City, I can get your ride right back home. Nobody will even know you've been away. They know. I can't go back. Well, it's up to you, son. Like the fellow said, a man has to do what he has to do. I can't. I just can't. Kind of early, aren't you? Oh, come on in. You know, I ain't slept a wink. How bad is it, Brad? Oh, not too. Everybody's sound asleep in the living room. Why don't you go clean up first, huh? Yeah. to think what a rotten thing I did you, Susan. Huh? Letting you carry the ball with Dad. Oh. That was a kid's trick, all right. <laughs> no, son, no. Look, when you've shown that you've learned how to carry the ball yourself, as you have just now, you're not a kid anymore. Oh, thanks, Dad. <laughs> Say, how far did you get? Not very. I got home about four, I guess. Uh, four o'clock? Say, what you been doing in the meantime? Oh, well, I forgot my key. I figured you'd two be asleep. Oh. So? So? So I went to sleep in the car. You forgot to put it away, Dad. Hmm? No! No! <laughs> you know, playing the part of Susan tonight reminded me of some words of a very famous American man of letters. His name is George William Curtis, and he said, it's a great pity that men and women often forget that they, too, have been children. Well, good night. See you next week. The May issue of the Radio TV Mirror magazine has the whole story of a secret that we have kept so well that this announcement will actually be Miss Young's first knowledge of it. The sponsor, the producer, the cast, and the crew of the Loretta Young Show are very proud and happy that in Radio TV Mirror magazine's annual awards poll, Loretta Young is the favorite TV dramatic actress as chosen by America's TV audiences. For Miss Young and for all of us, we thank you very, very much indeed.